Hello and welcome uh, welcome to the MacGuffin Podcast. Um, I'm Ed, I'm not Brandy. <laughs> and I'm Alan. <laughs> and uh, we're doing another one of our top fives. Now this time around we're continuing with some top five of director lists. We are mm-hmm. going to do a top five list for Steven Spielberg, but this time we're going to do top five underappreciated Steven Spielberg movies. We figured if we did just a, a normal top five, we'd end up with a lot of overlap. Exact, yeah, so probably the exact same. It'd though. be boring. A little so, bit. <laughs> so why don't you go with your number five? All right, so my number five film uh, is from 1991. Uh, I had talked about this film before in a previous top five. I really like Hook, you know, I mean, Rufio. it's not like, yeah, exactly, Rufio, right? I mean, it's, of course, it's not like the greatest film of all time, but I do have some sort of like nostalgic love for it. Um, I mean, to me, this is my Goonies, you know, um, I mean, it's just about, you know, being a kid and going out and having an adventure and, you know, doing like sword fights with pirates. See, and I, th- I thought Neverland was a lot less fantastic than it should have been. A lot less fantastic? Yeah. So it should have been more fantastic? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I'll give you that Dustin Hoffman and uh, Bob Hoskins are, are awesome in it. Captain yeah. Hook himself is really fun. Yeah, I mean, Dustin Hoffman pretty much steals the, yes. the entire movie. And I mean, I like Robin Williams too, you know, he was fine. I mean, this like middle-aged man acting like a little kid and everything like that. But it's fun, it's cool, you know. Um, I mean, again, it's definitely it's, a nostalgic... You just want to play nostalgic. Rufio in the remake, don't you? I, I do want to play Rufio in the remake. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do something about the hair, though. Yeah, something about the hair, definitely. I mean, I will admit it's it's not the best film ever made, but I, I enjoy it. And I mean, it's something that I think people should try try giving it a second chance, you know, <laughs> or third or fourth chance. <laughs> All right. Well, that's not going to be on my list. <laughs> so my number five, Well, and really quickly, just a little cheat, um, an honorable mention to Duel which oh, okay. everybody should see, but it's yeah. technically not a theatrical movie. It's a TV it was a made-for-TV yeah, made movie, TV. but so good. Mm-hmm. So anyway, on to my, my controversial number five, which I would say is The Lost World, Jurassic Park Deuce. Oh, okay. And in fact, I'm going to get some, some, some hate feedback for this. I like it better than the first one. I'm Whoa. probably the only person on the planet. Really? I'm, I'm throwing that down right now. Wow. Why? Because it's more dinosaurs. Because it's because the first. I mean, I really love the first movie. Don't get me wrong. Right. But the, there's a long stretch at the beginning before we see a damn dinosaur. I want to see some dinosaurs. Well, I mean, they were doing sort of like the Jaws thing, where they you know kept the monster away and they just hinted at but, it and they built up the suspense throughout the beginning. But of in the film. in Jaws, I was more engaged with the characters than. I was more in, invested in the in the, the triumvirate before I saw the the shark than I was in in Jurassic Park. I wanted some I wanted some dinosaurs. And that, for instance, the the scene in the trailer with the two T Rexes. Okay, I'll give you that. The, is, yeah, the trailer ooh. that trailer scene w- w- was good. The, um, but I mean, the, and then the end scene where the dinosaur was in what San Francisco. Yeah, like, it's really fun. And the the, the I, I the the chasing of the chasing them in the convertible down the street. I I really really like that movie. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't and know. love me some know. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum? Okay, I'll give you Jeff Goldblum, but I, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that okay. one. Especially so compared to the first one. <clears throat> so we're debating on our number fives. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right, let's move on to my number four underrated Spielberg film. Uh, it's from 2004. It's The Terminal. Good movie. Um, thank you. <laughs> it looks like we won't have too much of a debate on this <laughs> it's one. It's not on my list, but it's a good movie. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's this sort of stigma when it comes to like uh, romantic comedies nowadays. Um, I guess they're not like been giving enough credit or whatever, especially the good ones. I think this is a really good one. I think Tom Hanks is great in it. He's charming. Uh, his his chemistry with Catherine Catherine Zeta Jones was excellent. Um, all the supporting cast: Stanley Tucci, Diego Luna, Zoe Saldana. Um, they're all working great. Um, I just love that it's like this world that's entirely inside of the the airport and the way you know Tom Hanks' character has to like survive, almost kind of like Castaway inside of the airport. You yeah, know? it's it's really cool. His inventiveness and everything. It's, a little lighter than Castaway. A, li- a little lighter than Castaway, <laughs> definitely. I mean, uh, it's fun. It's it's romantic. It, it's funny. I mean, I don't see how people cannot like that movie. I I, I dig it a lot. Too. Too. One of the things I'd, I'd say about it also is nice to see Spielberg working on something a little more character driven mm. than just a you know big screen action epic, which are great, but right, right. you know it's absolutely. nice to see variety. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'm I'm on board with that pick. Thank you. My number four is I don't say I don't think it's probably as underappreciated now, but it definitely was at the time, and that was the color purple. Huh. Um, and yes, it, it it it's a terrific movie. It's one of 
you know, op for instance, Oprah Winfrey, one of her old, only acting roles, I mm -hmm. wish she'd stayed with acting. Mm -hmm. I think she's phenomenal in it. Mm -hmm. um, and Whoopi Goldberg, I'm flat out going to say, she won the Oscar for the wrong role. She won it, oh, she yeah, won she it won for, for Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. She, she should have been nominated for, yeah, for this. For The Color Purple, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a travesty that that film was nominated for, what, like, 10, 10 Academy Awards or something like that? And didn't, it didn't win any. And it, it was, didn't win any of them. At the time, it was part of this big kind of Spielberg backlash, which was, uh, oh, he's too commercial, he can't be a serious artistic director. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, that it always felt, it, these, these were the days he felt like he kind of still had to prove himself to the artistic community mm -hmm. you know and you know which is in a way it's good he had and had to had to go make schindler's list oh right, you know yeah. terrible right. but yeah but still i uh color purple i i think is a fantastic film it's a, it is a fantastic film absolutely okay so let's move on to my number three uh my number three film is from 1984 it's indiana jones and the temple of doom uh Kind of give exactly <laughs> the good part out. I, I don't know, like, the, it feels like people aren't giving this film enough credit as like Raiders or um, the the last <laughs> Last Crusade. Um, I mean, I think this film is just as much fun, just as adventurous, and just as exciting as those other those other two. Um, as you can tell, I completely like disregard yeah. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but I'll definitely um, give you it's better than Crystal Skull. Yeah, but I mean. Let's excuse like the uh, the the sort of slight racism and uh, everything in that. Uh, Kate Kate Capshaw is the worst yes, thing in the movie. She screams throughout <laughs> the entire film, but I mean, I didn't. I wasn't really bothered by it or any, or anything like that. And apparently, Spielberg liked it, liked her enough to yeah, <laughs> yeah to put it mildly. But the last thirty, like the last act of that entire of that film is nothing but an entire action scene and i think that action scene from the beginning where he like re he's um uh under the voodoo spell to the very end is just nothing but hardcore action that ha -ha, lives very up funny to, dr jones exactly that lives up to everything else that's in that entire series so i i, I like the movie a lot i think cage capture is stinky in it but but other than that i i i you know Fine choice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what number are we on? Number three? Three, yes. Three, okay. Um, again, now this is one of those, like, with Spielberg, I, it's what I'd call a sliding scale of success in that, oh no, it's underappreciated, but it's an underappreciated Spielberg movie. It's, right. Whereas anybody else would be a success. Probably like, yeah. And it's Minority Report. Mm. I, think, I think when people are rattling off Spielberg movies, this is one of those that some people forget to forget to rattle off mm -hmm. um it's a uh, i mean you know people might debate oh it varied from the philip k dick novel it's based on oh blah 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 but long story short is he made a science fiction hitchcock movie oh yeah yeah you know it's a it, it, it's a it's a thriller about a wrongly accused guy or correctly accused guy depending on you know mm -hmm. your your take on it but uh, it's the wrongly accused man being hunted by the police which mm -hmm. is that's that's hitchcock Mm -hmm. and, except for it's got precogs and pre and, and touch sensitive everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean that is an absolutely great pick. It'll probably be mentioned again. Oh, okay. So, well, yeah. then let's move on. Exactly. Moving on to my number two film. Uh, my number two is from two thousand and five, and it's Munich. Um, you know what? Is, that's my number dose as well. That's what I'm talking about. Great minds. Great minds. Uh, I mean, it's a film that is controversial i mean just because of its setup you know um it, it, there's a lot of conjecture in the story right it's a right. it's a big what if kind it's of a, it is a big what if but i mean this film to me it's like i don't i don't even know how to how to really explain it but you have this guy played by eric bannon who's sent on a mission to and it's, it's probably revenge. his best role ever probably yeah I, I would say so uh sent on this mission to avenge um this terrible terrible crime that happened during the olympics and just the way he kind of toes the line between justice and then stepping over the line to becoming those that he's actually hunting i just thought it was very very interesting uh, a fascinating film i think a lot of the criticism that i i um heard or read was about like that last scene the last couple scenes that um was, was in the movie but I, I thought that it just fit all together like yeah, completely I, um i mean I, I don't know how people can like this is another one i think that that you can smell the whiff of hitchcock on it too mm -hmm. for instance the way he stages that scene with the bomb in the apartment oh yeah and then and, the ringing the the telephone right that's yeah. that's that you know there's about a 20 minutes that feels like outside of a hitchcock movie itself oh yeah and then there's that there's that other sequence where eric ban is in the room and all he needs to do 
do is turn off a light and he's just pacing and you, right. you don't know what's going to happen i mean that well, film was suspenseful and that the the scene where he's uh he and the um uh, the the converse, conversation about getting to the heart of uh, of the conflict between the two opposing assassins essentially mm -hmm. is you know it's riveting I I um yeah it's in that movie it, again it's another one of those sliding scale things in that well it was nominated for best picture how underappreciated could it be right right but yeah. <laughs> but it it it's another one I think it often gets forgotten in the conversation mm -hmm. yeah um. So, yeah, yeah. I'm obviously on board with you, too. It's my number two. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so moving on to my number one. Yes, it's a minority report. Um, I mean, when you think of Spielberg's films, like you just said, I think this deserves to be mentioned as one of his best movies. Uh, it works as a science fiction film. It works as a, a, an action movie, um, a character drama. Um, Tom Cruise, I think, is has never been better uh, in, in that film. And just the entire idea that you know where your destiny is heading and it's you don't know whether or not you can prevent it or if you actually have the ability to make a change i, I just found it to be completely uh fascinating and, and engaging the entire way through and yet it still doesn't lose momentum that scene for instance where he's getting the precog out of the out of out of her cell or whatever mm -hmm. and you know like they have to wait for the balloons to pass by yeah and you know it, it, everything's staged so just perfectly you're on your edge, the edge of your seat still yeah i mean and then again um the uh supporting cast max von Sydow, colin farrell samantha morton i mean everyone even tim blake nelson was great in that yeah. too um just a great great film um i mean i would even call it almost a masterpiece to be to be honest with you love it love it love it yeah so my number one and this this to me is the definition of an underappreciated spielberg movie is amistad oh yeah and um again nominated for some awards so how unappreciated can it be but True. i think it's very much so mm -hmm. um uh it even got some criticism not for the not for the film necessarily but for the fact that well for instance it's it's another case where hollywood makes a movie that's about the black experience but a lot of attention goes to the white characters mm -hmm. and, the, the, and, we, and i think that's probably that could be a fair criticism mm -hmm. um you know we've seen that happen before you know dry right. white season there were a lot of apartheid movies were like that so this one oh it's mainly about the matthew mcconaughey character but still i think G jimon hansu which mm -hmm. this was the first time i discovered him yeah, yeah I i'm this sure really most, put him out there yeah i i wish the guy would get more roles quite frankly i think he is amazing and the fact that he didn't get nominated for for best actor for this a crime yeah and um, you know, Anthony Hopkins being the only one to be nominated for Best Supporting Actor for as Martin Van Buren, he's really good in it. He's in the movie for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that's wonky. But seriously, it's such a good, such a such a good movie about a terrible thing we've done in our history. Right. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I haven't seen this film. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, then I've ruined it. It's about slavery and no. I mean, I know, things. I know everything about it. Like, I mean, I've read everything. Well, not everything, but I've read a lot about yeah. it, and I'm really interested in checking it out. I just, I don't know why I haven't gone around mm -hmm. to it. Um, but I mean. If it's anything that you mention, you say it is, then I'm definitely, definitely looking totally, forward to totally it. Totally, totally love it. Yeah. Well, anyway, why don't you tell us, uh, you know, where we're wrong, what, you know, when we're fighting over our number fives. Tell us why you love Hook. Tell us why you <laughs> love 1941, because I don't. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, throw, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah, anyway. And, um, and I'm really excited to see his two films coming out. Absolutely. Ten, ten, so, yes. Yep, definitely going to check it out. So, so uh, MacGuffinPodcast.com. Uh, we'll see you next time. Later. Later.